Welcome to my sewing room. What is it about sewing that continues to intrigue me after all these years? I find myself constantly looking for new fabrics to buy and machine stitches to try. My stash just gets bigger and bigger. Isn't it just amazing how the sewing bug bites and never leaves us? Our taste may change along with our sewing skills, but the simple seaming of two pieces of fabric together brings such joy. Today we're going to learn more tips and techniques to make each stitch just perfectly. Join me for a fun time in my sewing room and I'm very glad that you came. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Phyllis Hoffman. Phyllis is president of Hoffman Media. She is the publisher of Southern Lady Magazine, Just Cross Stitch Magazine, and Southern Baby Magazine. Phyllis, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Today we're gonna do this beautiful doll dress and we're gonna talk about the skirt. And these doll clothes are absolutely fun to make because you can use your remnants of lace and fabrics if you choose um, not to purchase even special fabric to do a doll dress with. I love to do matching daughter and doll dress for my friends who have little girls. I have two boys, so it's not in our house that we have dolls, but I love to give them. Today, let's talk about how we make a skirt that's this beautiful, and it's really quite simple. What we do is we determine on our skirt where the hem needs to go. We need to make this hem deep enough so that when our lace is attached, um, it hangs over the edge slightly, but covers where our hem is. And so as we begin our, our skirt, let's look at how we have done this. It's simple straight stitch. That takes hemming um, to an easy level where you just simply turn, turn your edge under and straight stitch. Then we position our lace as we've done here and be sure and pin it. Pinning is essential to make sure that all the little tips hang off the edge in the appropriate place. When we get to the final step, we're going to zigzag the lace in place. And using, of course, the same color as your lace, you'll simply take a narrow zigzag stitch and then finish the skirt according to the instructions. This beautiful skirt has ribbon that is run through the lace and these wonderful ribbon threaders or bodkins are very easy to use. I like these that are very flat and have the opening wide enough to get uh, the ribbons through. And of course you pull it back onto itself. Be sure and cut your ribbon at a slant, that will help. And then you can simply stretch it out and take it and start weaving through the places in your lace. And Martha, that's all there is to it. That makes a beautiful skirt, and as we pull this through, you can see the ribbon just lies perfectly flat. Well, I loved your idea about doing the matching either daughter and doll dress or granddaughter. Now, you know, I have granddaughter, so I love to do things, but that would be such a treasure to have the pictures made, and a lot of our viewers really do make matching daughter, granddaughter, uh, and doll dresses. It's a great thing. Phyllis, thank you so much for thank being you, here. Thank you, Martha. And now then, let's go to the technique boards for some exciting sewing techniques. I have the most exciting technique to share with you today. Can you believe that this lace was done completely on a serger, bridal tool and a serger. We're gonna show you all about how to do it. This beautiful serger lace makes the collar of the suit and just look at these beautiful, beautiful sleeves. And then again, the machine embroidery is at the bottom. I'll show you in just a minute. Even the buttons had been covered with this beautiful serger lace. All down on this wonderful jacket is machine embroidery, beautiful lace machine embroidery that circles this serger lace and nearly every bit of this was made on the serger. Now, how is this magical technique done? First of all, you have two pieces of water soluble stabilizer and some bridal tool. In this case, it's black tool, and you're gonna see a, a beautiful jacket in just a minute. Water soluble stabilizer on the top, black bridal tool, water soluble stabilizer on the bottom, and you use a temporary spray adhesive to sandwich those three layers together. The next step is to draw the grid for your, for your lace, however wide you want it. Lines, of course, in this direction, lines in this direction, and that's where you're going to make this wonderful uh, serger lace. 
It's better to start when you do your stitching around the middle of your piece of fabric. In other words, stitch this way all the way out to the right, come back, stitch to the left. Then after one direction is completely stitched on the tool with the two pieces of stabilizer, go back and stitch the other side. Once again, starting in the middle and then moving out to the left and out to the right. I am so happy to have as my guest today, Missy Billingsley. Missy is an educational consultant for Baby Lock, and Missy is the one that has invented this wonderful serger technique. Missy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's so nice to be here. Oh, just start showing it. Okay. And your suit, your beautiful suit you have on out of black. Yes. It, it's, it's a fun technique. It's a little time consuming, but it's a lot of fun, and you get really good results. So what I've taken is two layers of water-soluble stabilizer. This is not the film type stabilizer. This is a more woven stabilizer, so it's more stable for your, your stitching. So take your stabilizer, sandwich a layer of bridal tool in the middle, and another layer of water-soluble stabilizer on the back. That's your base fabric. And so once you have that sandwiched together, you're going to draw your grid. Now this is a 60 degree diamond shape because I didn't want to do curves in case my curves got really crooked. So I, I chose the straight lines because they definitely work better than curves. So I'll draw it either way. And these are just guidelines for me to follow when I'm stitching. Okay. So the next one I'm going to start, as Martha said, start about in the middle of your stitching and you're going to sur surge to one side. And this is all done with a serger chain stitch. So you can look on the back and see that it's a thicker thread on the back with your, just your regular needle thread on the top. So what I'll show you real quick, is the technique. I've started on this water soluble piece of stabilizer and see how I started in the middle? I do. Okay, so I'm going to surge all the way to this side and I'm just using my presser foot as my guide. My okay. lines are just so I can line it up again if in case I get a little crooked. So once I press the presser foot down and I'll just surge along this edge with a chain stitch. With a chain stitch and I'm just using my presser foot as my guide. So just chain off a little bit, clip your threads. And now you can look on the back and see, because we've actually used a, a thicker decorative thread in the looper. This is, um, it's a little bit thicker. It's probably like a 30 or 12 weight thread. So it gives it more definition. So you're going to finish the entire side in the one direction. Then you'll flip your piece around and you'll stitch the other side because you're going to use your presser foot as your guide. Okay. So once you've done those two sides, or that, that one side, then you're going to turn and do the opposite direction. You're going to do a cross hatch for your grid lines. And so again, you look on the back and you have this nice effect. And actually, that's all there is to creating the actual serger lace. Once you've created your lace as big a piece of you, as you need, then you're going to construct your entire garment. In the case of this jacket, I constructed the entire jacket and put the sleeves, put the lace on, and then once you're done, because see here's my freestanding lace embroidered on the same water soluble stabilizer, I'll sew it to the end where my sleeves are going to be, go ahead and construct my garment, and then here's the fun part. The magic. <laughs> Throw it in a, a dish of water or your sink at home, your bathtub, swish it around a little bit so it gets all the stabilizer out. Sometimes it takes just a couple of minutes because it is two layers of stabilizer. It, it is extra. So we and need to wash it out. the whole garment, you finish the whole the garment entire first. entire garment. Before you, oh, Missy, this is so exciting. Because this is when you go to the sink and you say a little prayer. <laughs> you say, please let this garment come out okay. See, then you wring it out. And so that's why I've got paper towels here. Oh, yes, and You yes. lay it out and let it dry yes, and see yes. what it looks like. Missy, this is so exciting. Isn't it fun? Oh, it really, really is. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For inventing this wonderful technique. And when you came in with these clothes, I was just so excited. Oh, well, it's, it's not a t technique I invented, but I did embellish on it some. And this is a sample right here. I don't know if you can tell the two different colors in the stitching, but this is just to remind the viewers to do a stitch out sample of their fabric so they can tell if the color is going to be appropriate because this one is a little bit lighter blue than the one that the, desi the desired effect. So just do a stitch out sample just to be sure. Oh, Missy, that's so exciting. Oh, you have sleeves. And I've got sleeves. <laughs> This is um, a case where I had a jacket and a blouse pattern, but the blouse only had short sleeves. And I really wanted long sleeves for this, for this jacket. 
So what I did is I took this blouse pattern because it has the higher header for, to go in the cap of the sleeve and I took the jacket sleeve and I combined them. So I laid the sleeve on top of each other aligning the top, the sides and then when I cut out my pattern piece I had a short, I had a short sleeve pattern adapted to make long sleeves and here's where you would cut out to make your long sleeve pattern. So now you have a jacket a blouse pattern that was originally intended for short sleeves, now you have a long sleeve pattern for it. So you just did a lot of tricks on that beautiful black jacket you have on. And I love the, your hot pink underneath it so you can really see the lace. Yes, you can definitely see the lace. Oh, Missy, thank you so thank you much for, for this me. exciting technique. And now Missy has some more sewing inspirations for you and I promise you some more garments with this fabulous serger lace. Can you even believe this magnificent christening dress made with Missy's technique? Every bit of this is, was made on a serger. Missy, tell us about it. Well, the christening dress is, is something, like I said, I wanted to do because it, it's a definite showpiece and um, it just shows off the serger lace technique perfectly. With the, the bodice, it was just a basic yoke bodice and I added the nice ruffle to the, to the collar. And this skirt itself is the full 45 inch width of fabric and a lot of people don't think you can get that much fabric in a serger but you actually can stitch it just fine and that's with the water soluble stabilizer and everything. Now Missy these tucks that look exactly like folded uh, quarter inch tucks uh, tell us about them. They're actually pin tucks created on the serger we have a special foot for the serger that just makes the fabric right up and makes perfect beautiful pin tucks. And they're just beautiful. They're really mm -hmm. those beautiful folded. Could I see the bonnet? You sure can. Oh, just look at the bonnet. Isn't that precious? The matching bonnet mm -hmm. to go with the christening dress. And again, you've used your wonderful serger lace, serger lace and your little ruffle with the batiste and the lace. All done on the serger. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. this is so much fun. I'll let you put the bonnet okay. back over. Now it is not limited. This beautiful lace is not limited to little baby things and little it's girl not. things. This is a wonderful blouse with an overlay. Now what have you done on top of your serger lace? Actually, before I ever washed the serger lace out, I did the machine embroidery on the hem to create a scallop hem, and I did the machine embroidery butterflies along the top before it was ever washed out, so just to add a nice effect. Did you construct the christening dress before you washed out the... I constructed the entire christening dress with the exception of the bottom ruffle before it ever got before washed out. Before you washed it out. That's very interesting. And this magnificent blue suit that we showed earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. Just absolutely beautiful. And the you have your machine embroidery freestanding lace on I the do. bottom. Now this, Missy, tell us about this adorable top. Well, this top was done with um, the serger chain stitch, the same stitch that's used on the christening gown, but it's done so the reverse side of the thread, the chain looper thread, can be shown on the top of the fabric. And the bottom is actually just a rolled hem made into serger created fringe. And then, then just applied to the blouse to give a, a nice fringy effect. And these wonderful metallic threads. Oh those my are just, goodness. Those are my colors. Oh, absolutely beautiful. And then this is so beautiful. Missy, tell us about this. This is actually a project that another girl's been working on and it's actually three hoopings in, in, in a large size hoop. It's um, done with embroidery software. You can create all your lettering to cre and create it to the size of hoop that you need and then just stitch it out. Just three hoopings. Is three hoopings plus the two on the top were separate hoopings. Now this is such a precious gift. Well, everybody uh, loves bigger and better in embroidery, so that's definitely bigger. Bigger and better. It's definitely bigger. It's and definitely it's bigger so and it's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, Missy, thank you so much. Thank and you. now Missy has some really interesting scrapbooking ideas to share with you. Missy, I just cannot wait for you to share what you have. I and mean, it's such a cute idea. Well, Martha, I have some pictures from um, some scrapbooking pages that we did that I made for the serger licensing that we had last year in Huntsville for the licensed serger teachers. Um, what I did on the first page is I just took on my regular sewing machine. I took some and did some crazy decorative stitching along the top. I printed out a really cute poem that one of the girls wrote and attached it to the page. And then on the machine embroidery, I did the ode to the serger licensing, which is, I may not have a, a nice handwriting, but I can certainly stitch it out on the embroidery machine and it looks beautiful. Then I showed some pictures of um, some ladies getting some help by Miss Kathy. And so that was one page. 
The second page is was our fancy night, the night we went out to a nice dinner. And so I put little sparkles on here. Again, I did machine embroidery for the for the titles of the groups with the decorative mulberry paper on the back side. And then on the front, you see these little hotfix Swarovski crystals. They are so much fun to decorate pages with. So the next pages I have, this one is just done with more decorative stitching on the regular sewing machine. Now this one is a fun page. This, if you do any quilting, or if you're even if you're not a quilter, if you're a scrapbooker, a diehard scrapbooker, you can do these quilt blocks with your paper instead of fabric. I have this one right here. It's a, it's a square and a square type technique where I cut out, fussy cut each individual lady's picture and placed it all around the diagram like a paper piecing template would be. This one is just a basic nine patch quilt square, which is what I'm going to show for you. But if you see, I have it decorative stitched on the top in between the two fabrics, to the two pieces of paper, excuse me, to join them together. And so that's what we're going to show. You can see that I've got it started here with the first two pieces joined together. And I'm going to go to the second row and I'll grab my two pieces of paper. The two, I have, so I have a picture and my, and my regular piece of paper. And I'm going to lower my presser foot. And I've chosen a decorative stitch on here. It's like a feather stitch. And then you're just going to stitch keeping the two, the two fabrics aligned. Except it's pieces Except of paper. Except it's pieces of paper, exactly. <laughs> I love it, Missy. I love it. And just stitch it and together. And just stitch like it you're together. Making a quilt. Exactly like you're making a quilt. But actually, it's a little easier than making a, a quilt easier. because you don't have to do all the, the pressing and all that fun stuff. So no pressing on the paper. <laughs> no pressing on the paper whatsoever. And that's all. And you sew the whole thing together, mm -hmm. and then you put it on the the bigger piece and stitch the whole thing down. That's to the exactly paper. what I did. It is so much fun to scrapbook with our sewing machine. It is a lot of fun. And Missy, I love what you did on taking an event and doing four mm -hmm. pages, so you can remember the event forever. Yeah. Missy, thank you so much. You're welcome. And next, we have some hand embroidery for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest, Wendy Shane. Wendy is president of Wendy Shane Design. She is a frequent designer for So Beautiful Magazine. She has studied embroidery at the Royal School of Needlework in London and in Madeira, Portugal, and truly has taught embroidery all over the world. Wendy has designed 30 patterns and she has authored four books. Wendy, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Martha, for having me. Today, what I would like to talk about is the type of cut work eyelets called teardrop eyelets. Now, um, these types, uh, this type of eyelets, as shown in this adorable little dress that I brought with me today, are, are pretty challenging. I will have to be honest when I say that. But I'm going to show you a very easy way to make them, or an easier way to make them, so that you be, you'll try it at home. So let's start and look at the hoop that I brought with me first. And I've drawn out a, a nice teardrop shape. Um, I'm going to start with one thread, and I'm actually going to begin on the edge of the eyelet when I begin my running stitch. Now, I'm going to not use a knot, so I'm using a waist knot, which will be cut off later, just to secure the end of the thread so that it doesn't pull through. And I'm going to start by coming up on the edge. And this type of work is best when done with a very um, tightly woven fabric or securely woven fabric. You don't want to use a loosely woven fabric for this because after all you will be cutting into the fabric and um, that is might run the risk of of tearing your uh, opening larger than you planned on doing. All right, so let me go to the next hoop um, where I've got my running stitch completed. Um, when you come around on the tip of the eyelet, make sure to elongate that last stitch right on the, on the end. What that will do is it will help you when you come around on that end with your whip stitches and uh, make the point more prominent. So I'm going to come around here and end right on the edge again where I started or began. And when I come out, 
I want to come up just on the outer edge of the running stitch. The running stitch is actually my foundation stitch. You need a foundation stitch around these because for the same reasons I said before with the fabric, once you cut into the fabric, you don't really want it to break apart on you. Now I'm going to begin by putting in a very sharp pair of scissors and I'm going to cut straight up to one edge and fan the stitches out on either side like this. Now the next cut I have to make, I'm going to have to turn the work or rotate the work and cut right up into the point. Now this particular type of work is worked either with a whip stitch on the edge or meaning just little satin stitches or you can do a buttonhole stitch. Today we're going to be doing a whip stitch. Now in order to stitch the work you need to remember one thing. You always go into the opening first and then come up on the outer edge. Just remember the water always runs down the hole so think of it that way and you'll always remember. As the stitches go around, I'm going to be holding the fabric down and I'm going to be placing my stitches fairly close together. You don't always have to have them exactly one side by side, each of them side by side, but at least have them not overlapping. So let me go to the next hoop now. When approaching the tip, here's where the skill comes into play. You, As you can see, I have my whip stitches uh, carefully stitched around and the fabric is turned behind. But when you do the tips, you want to try to fool the eye by causing the stitches to come down at a point, the, 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 of course the longest stitch is at the tip, but the stitches that approach the tip are at an angle so that it looks as though you will have a natural point here. And here I'm going to make the stitch so you can see what I'm talking about come down into the opening. Remember, always go into the opening and then up on the outer edge. I've seen so many people try to make these and they're actually stitching it backwards and that is the biggest mistake you can make. So just remember and also try to breathe while you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of helps you along. And You know, I have one question. The first time when you cut your little clips and the needle went down, it did not go into any of that fabric that was still no. left there. No, the fabric into is the hole. just, okay. it's just held back against the edge. Okay. The foundation needs to be covered up, so you need to make sure your stitches go on the other edge of the foundation, just here, okay. and then into the opening so okay. you can secure the sides. And now the last one that I brought with me is a completed eyelet. I'm going to have to hold the hoop a little bit for you. And then and I wanted to show this. Um, what I have been doing with this type of work is a little different than most embroiderers. I always didn't uh, had bad luck on the last stitch because I would throw the needle down the opening and then the last stitch would come loose. So I came up with this little trick of taking the needle in at the edge, just a fabric thread away, and then. Let's see if I can get that out without uh, causing a major disturbance. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, let's pull the knot through. Okay, well, let's hope on when you do your work, you don't have a <laughs> knot. And then on the back, you'll take the needle in and just slide it under those stitches to and secure the thread. Right. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wendy, it's for sharing this beautiful stitch. And now I'd like to share a piece from my vintage collection with you. I absolutely love this little dress. Now let me tell you the interesting story. Around 1900, from the factories in Switzerland, they came out with pre-packaged dresses. This is one of those. It does not have any shoulder seams. The little embroidery was done. The top piece was purchased, as was the skirt. Now, I don't know whether this mother put the tucks in or whether that was uh, the directions were, or she just put that little added touch, but this skirt is one of the most beautiful skirts I've ever seen. It has the embroidery on the bottom, and I think this mother probably gathered her lace and put it on the bottom. Now let me show you the little panels in the back. Remember, this all came in a kit already ready to go. Is that sweet or what? Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I have had a wonderful time and I'd like to invite you back next time.